Hello class and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. We are in Unit 3, Lesson 2 of Code.org's curriculum. And today we are looking at design mode, which is going to be kind of the foundation for everything that you are going to design and almost every project you're going to do from now until the end of the school year. So let's go ahead and jump into level one. Okay, here we have an app that should be pretty familiar. Now, when you're navigating these, you can always look at the directions by taking this ellipsis here, pulling it down, look at the elements on the screen, try to move some of them around. What properties can you change? Is there anything you can't change? Now, I actually really encourage you at this point to do more than just what the instructions say here. Um, really explore all of these tools because you're going to be using them a lot in the months to come. So let's take a look. I can move that around. I can move that image around. I can move basically everything it looks like. And uh, let's take a look at, there's a lot of new information on the screen right now. So we're going to start with this properties area right here. What this properties area does is it takes, let's say, that square, whatever it is you select, and it gives you everything that you can change about that shape, about that image, about that text. Um, a lot of this stuff you'll already understand if you're familiar with like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Things like font size and font family, text alignment, is it to the right, is it centered? Like for example, if I click on this one here and I switch it to center, I actually kind of like that a little bit better. So that's the idea. Properties here is where you change absolutely anything that you want to change about the elements on your screen. We'll get to events another time, but for now, is there anything you can't change? Well, I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you all, but it seems to me like pretty much anything we would want to change, we can change. So, moving on to level two. Once again, looking at the instructions, click on the screen element match the theme in the picture below. So that's all we got to do. And the purpose of this level is to show you that you don't have to make all of your colors from scratch. There are some ready-made themes. Let me zoom out a little bit. There are some ready-made themes that you can use to start with, and then from there you can make adjustments to colors as you see fit. So for example, we could change it to orange or ketchup and mustard or Area 51, which looks to me like the one it wanted us to match. So again, the lesson here is you don't have to do it all from scratch. Find the theme that most closely matches what you want, and then you can adjust colors after that. Moving on to lesson three. Colors for the background, text, or icons can be changed in a few different ways. You can type a common color name, such as white, and notice that it is in quotes, that is important. You can type the RGB value, um, so 255 being the highest and zero being the lowest. Um, so if you happen to know the RGB value, that's not a thing you're gonna be expected to do like on the fly. Um, the only reason you really wanna be that precise about it is if you're going for a very, very specific color. But you can also um, use color swatches and uh, it wants you to match this. So as I said before, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to find a theme that looks kinda like it. Nope, that's not, not Area 51 again. Not really that one either. That one's pretty close. I think we can adjust this one to make it look like this one, okay? So how am I gonna do that? Well, first off, I'm gonna pull this all the way down so that we really have a good comparison. Let's start with the background, okay? I want my background to be much more purple. So I'm gonna go into properties. I'm going to 
click on the background and then background color, I can kind of adjust it. Maybe add a little bit more blue to it. That's looking about right to me. Yeah. It's not it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but those two are slightly different, but I am I am satisfied with that. So now that you've got a bit of an idea of how this works, you're going to want to go through and try to make your app look as close to the sample as possible and really look at the details. Look at the differences in the font here. Look at the uh, the fact that this text has backgrounds and this text doesn't. Colors, fonts, try to make it match as much as possible. Notice that the button is a slightly different shape. One of the things that you can do with buttons is border radius, okay? The lower this is, the more rectangle it is. The higher this is, the rounder it is. Yeah, so I wanted it to be, what did it look like? Pretty rectangle, but slightly not, yeah? I'm gonna say like 10. I think five looks about right for the shape. So really go through, take your time, experiment with this stuff. I'm moving on to the next one. Pause the video, see what you can do. Okay, here in level four is where we're really gonna pause and look at all of these different elements that you can put into your apps because there are some very significant differences between them and each one is for a specific purpose. So let's take a look at these right now. But first, let's read the instructions. Images can be added to your app by uploading them to your assets or by pasting a link to the image. Download a picture of a cat and upload it to your assets. Add the image to your screen following the GIF below. And yes, it is pronounced GIF. I do not apologize for that. So what it's asking us to do, we're gonna click on the image and it says image and it's currently blank. We're gonna click on choose. And what I'm going to do is upload a file of my cat. There he is. And I will choose that file. And there he is in all his derpy glory. And you can do things just like any ordinary, um, like in Photoshop. You can move it around. You can stretch it. You can do basically anything you would expect to be able to do just directly. But you can also exert very, very specific and very detailed control over everything using numbers instead. For a lot of designers, it's really important for things to be perfect or as close to perfect as possible. So you can control things like the X position and Y position. So if I change that to 50, it moves it over there. I want it in the center, but with a little bit of math, I could probably figure that out pretty easy. Okay. But that's not the only thing we can do. Let's look at the rest of the elements that we've got here in this area. So we'll start with button. That's pretty self-explanatory. A button is a thing that you want your user to click to get some sort of result. Easy enough. You've got all the things you can do with it. You can change its position, how big it is, font, just like everything else. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Next, I want to draw your attention to text input and label because a lot of students early on get these mixed up. If you just want to put something down for the user to read, that's a label. All of your titles, all of your instructions, everything that the user is just supposed to look at and read, that is a label. So, for example, I could say in, in text, meet Blackjack which is the cat's name, I can move that there. That is a label and you wanna use that anytime you wanna put text into your app. What a text input is, is a place for the user to put text, okay? So like I can say your name here and then when I run the program, I can click on the text box and I can say Cunningham. Okay, so don't use the text input if you're just making 
a, a label, use label. All of this, by the way, is just drag and drop. And with the, uh, the drop-down menus, it is as easy as just making your options and putting a line break between them. Option three, option four. When I run the program, I can see all of those. We will later determine how to actually use the drop-down menus and buttons to do things, but for now, it's enough just to know what you can do with them and what options you have. Checkboxes and radio buttons are pretty self-explanatory. The only difference is with radio buttons, I believe that only one, yeah, can be active at once. And with checkboxes, you can have as many or as few of them checked as you want. So that's the difference between radio buttons and checkboxes. Image we've already talked about. Canvas. Now, here's a thing that I'm actually not super duper familiar with myself. I'm not sure what Canvas does. I will look into it and make a video just about Canvas. Text area. Again, do not use text area if what you need is a label. I'm going to remove that Canvas. We'll figure that out later. A text area is a spot where the user can type text. It's just a bigger one than this little text input here. A slider is a, you know, a choice that goes between, between values. You get to choose what the minimum and maximum values are. It starts at 0 to 100, and each click, as it were, each move is one is 1% by, by default, but like I could go from 0 to 5, and then when I run it, I've got a nice little 0 to 5 slider. I hope you're thinking about how you might be able to use these elements once you learn how they work and put them into your own apps. And photo select is another one I'm not super familiar with. Um, chart, I do know. It's basically when you're making graphs and things of that variety. Screen gives you another screen to work with, and we will talk a lot more about that in a future video. So was there anything else on level four? No, we just had to download the picture of the cat, upload it to the assets, add the image. We did all that, so we're moving on. I strongly suggest taking notes on what each of these things does, at least for now, because seriously, you want to make sure that this part of it is automatic. Okay, icons are an easy way to make your app look professional. Match the picture below. Icons are found in the image chooser. So, we want it to look like this. We need like a, a solid camera, and uh, we need a couple of images. To go there and there. Now it said it was in the image chooser, so I'm going to click this word choose. And uh, there's this tab icons here. And if I remember right, we wanted the solid video camera. Oh, hey, look at that. I can search for video, and it's right there. And then the other one was film. Now, are we done? Not quite. Looks like they need to be a bit smaller. I'm just going to eyeball this. I'd say that's about right. They are slightly different shapes. Yeah, this one's disconnected. This one's connected. I'm not too worried about that. And then, like, there. I'd call that close enough. Let's move on. It's important that your elements have meaningful names. When you begin programming your app, you will control each element on the screen using its ID. Change button 1 to play button. Notice, you cannot put any spaces in an ID name. It's common to use camel case where the first letter of each word uh, is capitalized except for the first one. 
So like play button, which is lowercase p for play, but capital B for button. This is not a requirement. You don't have to do this, but it is very common. So it's probably a good habit to get into. So even when you've got three words here, the first word text is lowercase, and then every word after that is capitalized, area and input. And again, what they're saying about names is super, super important because you're not gonna be necessarily looking at the screen while you're doing your code. You're gonna not be referring to it by pointing at the screen, you're gonna be referring to it by its name. So like, unless you have something written down that says that button one is the start button, it's a whole lot easier just to click on the button and under ID, instead of button one, we're gonna put start button. That way, when we're going forward, when we want things to, we want something to happen when we hit the start button, right? It's gonna start the game. Once we do all that coding, we're gonna to refer to the start button. It'll make life nice and easy. So all of your elements, every picture, every label, everything should be labeled with a name that will tell you immediately what that is in your app. So you don't have to keep going back and forth looking at, um, looking at your app change the rest of the element IDs. Okay, so this one is, is uh, cookie clicker. I'm just gonna call that title. Click the cookie. I'm gonna call it instruction. The cookie itself, I'm gonna call cookie image. Use your own names, whatever makes sense to you. That's the important bit. Button is the start button. The background is called screen one. I could even call this cookie screen if I wanted to. Is there actual code behind this? No, not really. Just wondering. Moving on. Okay, use what you've learned to recreate the design below. Each element needs a meaningful ID. So once again, I'm gonna kind of get you started on this, but it's important that you're able to do this on your own. Now, a couple of suggestions. Number one, Make sure you're matching up fonts and colors. Number two, don't forget the themes. So in fact, I think that's the polar theme. I'm gonna call that the polar theme. Hint number three, this is a text area, not text input, text area. That one right there. And yes, um, this one is a text area, or I'm sorry, a text input. See, even I or mix these up. This one's a text input. This one's a drop down menu. Make sure you're looking at things like the curvature of the buttons and all of the colors. And finally, you're going to need to find a piano image online for this. It's not going to be available to you in code.org. So you're going to have to find one that approximates it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but make it as close as you possibly can. Good luck, we're moving on. Finally, we have a check for understanding, naming element IDs. Why is it important for element IDs to have meaningful names? Well, I went on and on about that just a few minutes ago, so just back the video up and you'll be able to answer this one pretty easily. If you have any questions, please do put them in the comments. I do read them, I do try to respond to them, and uh, I hope you have learned a little bit about the design mode in code.org. Next time, we're gonna start talking a little bit about coding. Thank you for watching. I hope I see you then.